Monty Foreman speaking. This sequence you are viewing is from the American Quarter Horse Association film, Ride, Cowboy, Ride. It features my youngest son, Gary, on Chapo Hancock, running the AQHA number one rein-in pattern. Would you like to know the secrets for getting a boy and a horse to work like this? Well, actually, there are no secrets. Over 80% of it is in the science of using the leads. Leads are the left-handedness and right-handedness of galloping horses. This film demonstrates more about this left-handed and right-handed footwork than has ever been known before by horsemen all over the world. It's hard to believe, but less than 1% of all riders in the world can do flying changes of leads on call. Okay, I'll take old Chapo and introduce you to the leads. These movies were made at Klamath Falls, Oregon, during one of my riding training clinics there. Chapo starts here in the right lead. Notice that his right front and right hind feet lead the left front and the left hind. He changes now to the left lead. Now he's leading farther forward with his left front and left hind. Watch closely. Here's the footwork change again. And he's in the right lead. Notice the smoothness of the changes. The horse has to change both in the front feet and the hind feet to be complete. Few riders can make a horse do a flying change of leads at this slow a lope. Strange as it may seem, the slower a horse gallops, the harder it is for him to do flying changes of leads naturally. He can change much easier at the faster speeds. Notice how smooth the change of footwork is when done with speed. Here it comes. I'm in the left lead here. Roll back to the right and come out in the right lead. He changes to the left lead, but I change him back and roll him back to the left, coming out in the left lead. Then I roll him back from the left to the right lead. And again, roll him back from the right to the left lead. Even in stops, we want the horse to stay in the same lead all the way down. This was a stop in the left lead. And here's another stop in the left lead all the way to the left last stride. Even in his works over the hocks. The horse goes to the right lead, right lead, then left lead, left lead, left lead, right lead, right lead. This keeps him from getting his legs tangled up and also keeps him in rhythm. Chapo Hancock was a great little horse. There are only three ways to change leads on call. One is a drop to a trot change, and the other two are flying changes. Hind foot first and front foot first. Here are the hind foot first changes. Watch the hind feet change before the front feet. Horses can change the slowest and smoothest using the hind foot first change, but he has to be trained for use in this versatile change. Hind foot first changes can be done at faster speeds too. 
Here are three hind foot first changes. You can see it a little easier on this next one. Watch closely how that right hind foot will change, then the right front will go down right afterwards. Here. Now the fourth change is a front foot first. Watch the front feet change first, then the hind feet. Here is when I first discovered that a horse could be changed hind foot first. Watch closely now. Get ready, here it is. Although it was done accidentally, I had to learn to do it on call. Here's a front foot first change, then followed by four hind foot first changes. And now a front foot first change again. As far as I know, I'm the first person to be able to do these two different kinds of flying changes of leads on call. Here at Apple Valley, California, Pocolano and I are demonstrating that horses do not have slow flying changes of leads naturally. Here we are doing figure eights in the left lead only. When galloping slowly, horses do not change leads, particularly when the rider sits down leans back, leans toward the way he wants to go, and overdoes his neck reining. Horses can gallop using their legs four different ways. You've seen the left lead. Now here we are doing figure eights in the right lead. Horses become chronically one-sided because riders who do not know leads make them that way. Horses are not one-leaded by nature. The third and fourth ways a horse uses his legs is by disuniting or caloping. Here in the right lead, he's changed to the left lead in his front legs only. He changes back to the right lead, comes around, and again, changes in his front feet only. This is what we call disuniting. Now he's in a left lead and changes to the right in his front feet only. Right lead in front, left lead behind. This is cow loping, as we call it. Here is a horse's natural slow change of leads, the drop to a trot change. This is the way that horses should logically change leads, slowly, in equitation and pleasure classes. Here, Mr. W.C. Shipley of Denver is doing it at its smoothest. Can you see the change? This drop to a trot change takes some real schooling. Here is Gary at the age of 13, training a green horse to do drop to a trot changes on call. He has to break the horse down to a trot, then get in rhythm with the horse's right front foot, take off in a left lead. Then break the horse down to a trot, get in rhythm with his left front foot, break off in a right lead. Now here comes two flying changes of leads. 
Notice the difference. Oh, it looks very easy, doesn't it? But when anything is done by an expert, it should be and look e very easy. This is what we call a false lead. When the rider puts the horse in the wrong lead on purpose. The horse does not have to be in the correct lead for every turn, but the rider must always know what lead the horse has and when it is necessary to change. Most riders can make half a figure eight in the wrong lead, but it takes some real doing to make both sides of the figure eight in the wrong lead, making the horse change in the center from one wrong lead to the other. In my 50 years, I've only seen two other horsemen uh, do this, and they were dressage riders on dressage horses. The horse I'm riding here is Pocolano. Ridden by Gary, Pocolano stars in another AQHA film, Youth and the Quarter Horse. Both of my sons, Mike and Gary, and five of the horses we've trained have worked in the American Quarter Horse Association films. Here's Mike barebacked on Pocolano with only a string in the horse's mouth, doing hind foot first changes of leads on call on the straightaway. It's the hard way to do it. Now here he is on a saddle doing the hind foot first changes every third stride. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. How about that? Of course, Mike is on a balanced ride saddle. This one was given me by the Phallus Saddlery. Here's Pocalina, who has won over $200,000 cutting cattle. She is ridden here by her late owner, Barney Skipper. Notice that practically the only maneuver a cutting horse uses is a rollback. Left lead to the left, right lead to the right, left lead to the left, right lead to the right. A rollback is one of the basic maneuvers in a complete all-speed basic handle. I call this maneuver a rollback because you roll back from one lead to the other. Prior to my horse handling science book, we had no name for things like this because no one had gone into a study of leads this far before. Here's Mike on Charlie Russell rolling back to the left, coming out in the left lead. Rolls back from the left to the right lead, comes out in the right lead. Right lead to the left lead. Always turn away from the lead that you're on in a rollback. Now here's Gary on Chapo Hancock. Notice the speed and the precision of this little yellow horse's rollbacks. On a rollback, you always turn away from the lead you are on but when you roll toward the lead you are on and come out in the same lead, it's called an inside roll. Here's the fabulous Jimmy Williams of Flintridge, California. This man has made over 25 world's champion bridle and hackamore horses since 1946. 
Jimmy uses a maneuver in which he does two or three inside rolls and then jumps out in the opposite lead. I asked him what he called it. He said he didn't know. It just felt good, and he just used it in a lot in his training. Since it is logically a basic maneuver, I've included it in a complete basic handle and called it an inside roll and out in the opposite lead. Jimmy does beautiful flying changes of leads. Now, here is Jimmy's maneuver. Right lead, right lead, right lead, right lead, right lead, right lead. Jump out in the left lead. And then left lead, left lead, left lead, left lead, left lead. Jump out in the right lead. And right lead, right lead, right lead. Jump out in the left lead. It's amazing how easy a horse can do this. Jimmy Williams is one of the greatest and most versatile horsemen of all times. Here's the famous Jody Earl, the horse who works cattle without a rider. Notice the way he uses his leads. There's no mess up in his footwork as he works cattle. Working a cow, a horse will use his leads with fair accuracy. But when he's being reined by a rider who doesn't know leads, he simply falls apart in every way. Here is the same horse, Jody Earl, with a rider who doesn't know leads. You can see how terribly he handles his footwork. It's not really the horse's fault because, by nature, he just doesn't handle from the reins when being ridden in this manner that we've been taught to ride and guide horses. Wrongly disunited, his stops, too, are completely out of time and balance. Rear back and yank to a stiff-legged prop stop. Good roping horses use their leads almost automatically when following calves. This one comes out in the right lead, swaps to the left lead, and goes down to where Leroy Webb steps off of him and changes back to the right lead. But try to ride and guide a horse from the reins without lead signs, and by nature, he doesn't handle this way. Here's another yellow horse. This one has been made awkward because he's been ridden by riders who do not know leads. Consequently, Yellow Wagon is habitually left-leaded. He only has a left lead on call, no right lead. Here he's going around in the left lead. He just can't turn in a smaller circle. He tries to turn him to the right, but the horse still does not change leads, and he goes on around in the wrong lead. Here he tries a figure eight, and notice that at a slow gallop like this, the horse just does not have any change of footwork. He can't turn, and he hangs up, and he's back in the old lead again. This is how bad horses can be when they have but only one lead. Here in the left lead, he tries a roll back. Notice that he rolls to the right, but he comes out in the wrong lead, always the left lead. The horse has no agility. Here he tries a 360 over the hocks to the left. Even though he's in the correct lead here, the horse still can't turn. Part of this is due to bidding. Curb bits have little sideways control. Here the horse starts disunited, right lead in front, left lead behind. 
The rider doesn't know it, but he tries a 360 over the hocks. The horse falls apart, and you can see the results of trying to force a horse to come around by neck reining. It just doesn't work very well. Here's the left lead again. The wrong lead, since he's going to the right. It stops or is lacking in rhythm and balances the rest of his work. Rear back and yank on the reins. The second stop is just as bad. Stiff-legged, prop stop. You've seen a very poor moving horse and an untrained rider. Now let's look at a very talented horse with an untrained rider. This is my very close friend, George Britton, Bull Ansel of Wichita Falls, Texas. Bull doesn't ride for pleasure. Horses are his transportation to work his cattle. And he's one of the wildest cowboys I've ever known in my life. He'll tell you that this horse, Walkie, is the best horse he's ever owned. Why is Walkie his best horse? When you know leads and basic handle, the answer is apparent. This horse merely uses his leads the best of any of the horses that Bull has owned. The horse always tries to use his footwork right and tries to turn the way the rider wants him to go. He takes off in a wrong lead, changes to disunited, back to the correct lead. He does a flying change of lead here. Dis unites right here, catches the lead, then drops to a trot, takes the left lead out, and then disunites again. Here he tries to do 360s over the hocks, but only manages to wildly cover lots of territory. Neck reining, the way Bull does it, throws the horse's head all out of kilter. Also, the bit is pinching the corners of the horse's mouth. This is a subject that we'll take up in another movie on bits and bidding. Look at his roll backs. Because of the way he rides and handles the horse's the head, they are a shade on the wild side. Notice always the way the horse is using his legs. These are inside rolls instead of rollbacks because the horse is changing leads and then turning toward the lead he's on. It takes about two or three strides longer to get turned around. Notice how the horse is always biting his head. This is caused by the pinching bits, reins being held too high, and rough overemphasis on the neck rein. These sequences are taken in slow motion so you can see how the horse misses his leads, but at least the horse is changing leads, not hanging up like old Yellow Wagon did a while ago. Okay, Bull, lean forward and kick back. Give me that old one yank stop. Just about everybody stops a horse this way. Here he goes again. Banks himself off the wall to stay in the arena. And long about here, Bull will holler. Whoa, snide. No, folks, these are not balanced stops. Now let's look at a trained horse and a trained rider. This is my oldest son, Mike, riding one of my exhibition mares to Kez Lady, 81. Mike was always more interested in hunting and fishing than in riding. And when he's about 14, I told him that in this horse business, we needed shovelers and we needed shovelers. Take his choice. 
Now let's take a look at the maneuvers that I've included in the first complete basic handle ever assembled. Omitting the drop to a trot changes, here are four flying changes. A complete basic handle includes every maneuver a horse ever needs to use to get his rider to the right place at the right time with the least amount of fuss. Starting at the right lead, he does an inside roll, then jumps out in the opposite lead. Then a 360 over the hocks, all in the left lead. Then an inside roll and out the opposite lead again. 360 over the hocks, right lead, right lead, out in the right lead. Right lead, right lead, jump out in the left lead. Left lead, left lead, left lead, out in the left lead. Inside roll and out the opposite lead. And he stops. Starting with the left lead this time, these are rollbacks. Remember, rollback means turn to the opposite lead that you're on. Roll back to the right, out in the right lead. Roll back to the left, out in the left lead. Notice that Mike keeps the rhythm working all the way through. 360 over the hocks. And then a roll back with a 360 over the hocks on top of it. He rolls back again with another 360 over the hocks on top of it. Look how relaxed the rider and horse are. Everything is done in balance and with ease and with rhythm. It's easy to see that the mare's accurate use of the leads accounts for over 80% of her agility. It's like dancing. The rider has to guide because he's the only one who knows where they're going. This prevents pattern soured horses. Even on the spins, the leads are important. Right lead to the right, right lead, right lead, right lead, right lead. And then to the left lead, left lead, left lead, left lead. Notice how she keeps her left hind foot underneath her. Yeah, I'm kind of glad Mike took riding as his choice. Now let's talk about stops. There's lots of ways to stop a horse. Sometimes you just have to jump off. But here is what we figure is a better way of stopping. No rearing back and yanking. Instead, we stand up in the stirrups with security and check the horse down in time and in balance. Now let's watch how a horse stops when you step off him like you're in calf roping. Same kind of stop. Here's little Doc, trained and ridden by Mike. He was six, 1966 High Point Appaloosa working champion at the Denver National Western Show. On his second stop, he doesn't even have to go to the bit. And here's Gary on Possum. Notice the horse's legs do not come up in the air and prop. Watch the stop again. He steps off. Sometimes in checking, you can sure miss the horse. 
and not get him down in balance. Here Mike's training a stop on a Casbar's coat. Here's Gary on a little mare named Nifty Rebel. Watch how he gets her sliding on her hind feet and running on her front feet. Oh, isn't that pretty? Here it is in slow motion. The third stride, she's sliding and then she runs on her front feet. Here at Rollins, Wyoming, during the riding training clinic there, we filmed the stop that I use as advertisement for my clinics. The first stop, I get him sliding on his hind feet and galloping on his front feet. Notice as he's running wide open. The second stop, he slides on his hind feet and then I throw the reins to him and he runs on his front feet. That's the way I like it. This is what we think are the two ways to stop and to keep a horse in balance. Sometimes we get to clowning during the clinics, so I pull down my hat and run and vault upon my steed. In the last few years, I've done over 500 of these riding training clinics in over 36 of the United States. This one is being done at the Rose Bowl Riders Arena, just a mile north of the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. If I rode and handled a horse like most people, I'd have their troubles too. Nothing makes this little horse Chapo matter than for me to start clowning on him. He just grinds his teeth and flattens his ears. Now I kind of straighten up on him and make old Chapo come in and stop like I like to have one do. Well, how about that? Well, folks, this about winds up this film. You can see now why it really is the footwork that counts. Hope we get to visit with you again real soon. This is Monty Foreman saying, adios, amigos. Mm -hmm.